start off by clarifying the question. We are given three different grids, each with a different pattern, as you can see here. Um, and we are asked to rotate them so that when we put them on top of each other on the final grid that I'll use here, um, we can cover the maximum amount of squares possible in this grid. So I'm going to start off by um, indicating, uh, showing each pattern with a different color so that it's easier to see what I do when I put it on the final grid. So let's start off with Let's choose yellow. I'm going to use yellow to show this pattern over here. Uh, so, oops, this one. Oh, sorry. Let's start that over. All right, and I'll just color that in a little. Next, I will choose a different color to represent this pattern. So I'll color that in this grid here. Um, and lastly, the last pattern will represent this pattern, or sorry, the last color will represent that pattern and I will draw that out here. So basically what I've done is just repeated the patterns using different colors um, in bigger grids so that you can see what happens when um, we put them on top of each other on the big grid on the right of the screen. So let me just color that in. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use this big grid to uh, place the different patterns on. So I can start with the uh, green grid. So that's this. Oops. So that's this one here. And since this grid is currently blank, there's nothing on it. So uh, it doesn't matter what rotation I start with. So I'm just going to do the same pattern that I have here and do an outline indicating. So basically, uh, since this grid is bigger, I'm not going to color it in all the way but I'll just do an outline, which means that all of these squares will be colored in this color. And let me know if this is confusing. But these, so these squares that I've indicated are colored green. And so right now, what we've done so far is included the green pattern. Now, what we have left are the yellow and pink patterns left to put onto the grid. It doesn't matter what order we put these in, since the final result will just be all of the patterns stacked up on top of each other. So let's start with the yellow pattern first. Um, first, let's see what this pattern, what the yellow pattern looks like when it's rotated, since the question says that we can rotate the sheets which means turn them uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm going to start with what happens if we turn this grid counterclockwise. So I will draw that oops, over here. Using the same color, if we turn this grid counterclockwise, then we will end up with a pattern that looks like this. So just to clarify, this is the pattern you get when you take this grid and you turn it counterclockwise like this. Now I'm going to take this grid and turn it counterclockwise again but, and I'll show that over here. So if you take this grid and you turn it counterclockwise, you will get this result. 
Now, notice that this grid is the same result as this grid, which means that if you keep turning the, the grid uh, counterclockwise, you will end up with either this pattern or this pattern. So basically, the two options uh, for the yellow pattern rotations will be either this or this, if you keep rotating them. So if you go back to the question, it says it's asking for, let me highlight it here, it's asking for the maximum possible number of squares that will be colored um, if she, if Paige puts the three grids on top of each other uh, in such a way. So if you go back to our main grid over here, you'll see that there are still one, two, three, four, five squares that are not yet colored and mostly they're on the top row. So we want the maximum possible of squares that are colored. Uh, we should look into co covering more of the top row. So between these two uh, patterns, you will see that this pattern, or sorry, this rotation of the yellow pattern covers two of the top, two squares of the top row, whereas this one only covers one square. So we are going to use this pattern, check. Uh, I put a check mark, but it's a little light, so I'm not sure if you can see. And it, we will move this pattern and put it on our big grid to show that we are stacking the two patterns on top of each other. I'll just color that in. It doesn't matter if the squares are overlapping, like in this area, because when we return back to the original question without colors, um, they will all be black. So if they are overlapping, all you will see is black. Right now, we are focused on the squares that are not colored yet. So just to reiterate what I did, we started off with, so that the goal is to overlap these three patterns we started off with the green pattern, which is this one, and we just drew it onto our main grid. Next, we took the yellow pattern and see what it would look like if we rotated it counterclockwise and kept rotating it. Then we decided that this rotation would um, be better for producing the maximum possible number of colored squares because it covers more of the top row compared to this one. And so we took this pattern and we put it on top of the green pattern in our final grid. So now what we have left is the pink pattern, which is this pattern over here. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the yellow pattern and we'll see what happens to this grid when we turn it again counterclockwise. So I'm going to do that down here. Um, so first off, if we take this pattern and we turn it counterclockwise, we will end up with this pattern. So you see we still have two in one corner and one in the other corner. It's just rotated from this pattern. Now what we're going to do, similar to what we did before, is that we're going to take each pattern, each rotation of the pink pattern, and keep rotating it counterclockwise. So I'm just going to show what we're doing. Taking this and changing it counterclockwise, just like we did before. So if you take this pattern and you rotate it, you will get this pattern. Again, if you rotate this, if you take this pattern and you rotate it counterclockwise, you will get this. And finally, if you take this pattern and you rotate it counterclockwise again, you will get the same thing that you started off with, which is this. 
So all I did with the pink pattern, same as the yellow pattern, is I took the original grid that they gave us in the question here, and I kept turning it counterclockwise. So if you look at my mouse, this is the way that I was uh, turning it. So if you turn it, turn the square once, you get this pattern. Turn it again, you get this pattern. Turn it again, you get this pattern. And turn it one more time, you get this pattern, which is the same thing that you started off with. So if you go back to this graph, oops, if you go back to the original, uh, the sorry, the grid that we are placing all of the patterns onto, you'll see that we are still missing this square and this square to be covered. Now, since we only have the pink pattern left, we have to choose one of these rotations to fill up these squares. So uh, just to indicate, there's this square that we want. And I'm just going to mark that off in all of the rotation possibilities that we can put. And then this square, which is this one here. Um, all I did was basically mark the spaces of the main grid that we want to fill with the purple to see what will happen if we put a purple pattern onto this grid. So as you can see, there is no pattern or rotation of the pink pattern where both X's, so the X's represent the spots that we want to cover. There is no pattern where both X's are covered by the pink pattern, which means that we cannot cover the whole grid. However, there are three patterns, this one, this one, and this one, where one X is covered. So in order to get the, the next best um, maximum possible number of colored squares, we can choose either this pattern, this pattern, and this pattern. Since um, the rest of the pink pattern will just overlap what's already on the grid, it doesn't matter which one of these three that we choose. So I'm just going to go and choose this one. So now I'm going to you uh, take this pattern, this rotation of the pink pattern, and put it on the main grid with, oops, with the other patterns that we've already put on. Again, remember that if it's overlapping, um, that doesn't mean anything because it'll just be black when we change it back. So all we care about is which squares are colored and which squares are not colored. Doesn't matter what color is on it. So if we go back to the original question where we are talking about the number of black squares, then let's change that back now. Since we've already placed everything that we need, all three patterns onto the square, we can change it back to the original question, which I'm going to do here. So if we take the black, I'm just going to cop take this, uh, these colored squares and transfer it onto this grid using only black since, oops, sorry, since this is what the question was asking originally. So if you do that, you'll get a pattern like this. All right, that will be the outline, and then you just color it in. Again, just to repeat what I, oops, <laughs> ignore that little part there. Uh, repeat what I just did, I took the um, colored squares from this grid, which is what we've been working on with on this whole uh, project. And I changed all the colors back to black since that's what the question was originally asking. And when you change it back to black, this is the pattern that appears overall. So going back to the question, it asks, 
What would be the maximum possible number of black squares that Paige could see if she was looking down on all the sheets that were stacked up on top of each other? So let's count. Just color. There would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares now that are black, resulting in the answer. So the maximum possible oops, possible number of black squares she could see is eight, which is answer D uh, up here. Um, all right, so I'm just going to quickly go over basically what I did here. Starting off with the question, we wanted to see if we were to stack these three patterns on top of each other, what is the maximum possible number of squares that would be covered? I started with assigning each pattern with a different color so that we could see what we were doing. Uh, so at this point, we're looking for covered squares, not just black squares. The first thing I did was put in the green pattern, which uh, it doesn't matter which one I put. I just picked the green one since it um, was the closest to the grid. Um, and next, we I between the yellow and pink, again, which doesn't matter which one I choose, I chose the yellow one first. Uh, I rotated it counterclockwise to see what all the possibilities were since the question states that Paige can rotate the sheets. And we decided that this rotation would be better to place on the grid since it covers more of the top row than this one. And we wanted to cover uh, the maximum possible number of squares. Lastly, we were left with the purple pattern, which is this one here. So same as the yellow pattern, we took that down here and rotated it counterclockwise this way to see which different patterns it could produce. And we found that rotated once gives this, rotated again gives this, rotated again gives this, and finally rotated back gives this. Uh, we had the choice of choosing this one, this one, or this one to put finally in the in the main grid. And uh, it doesn't matter which one we chose, but we ended up choosing this one, which we colored in over here in the main grid. So going back to the original question, it wanted the number of black squares. So we took all the covered colored squares here, doesn't matter what color, and changed it all back to black. Then we counted the squares that were covered in black, and we got the answer of number eight.